If you want, it's Emily Fox. Today's video is going to be the beginning of my reading challenge for the month of August. So every week I will be doing a reading vlog trying to catch up and or finish as many series as possible. I need this. Let's just be honest. Last year, I think I finished one series after starting like 20 something. It was not my best moment. So this year I wanted to attempt to catch up or finish 10 series. So far, we're not doing super good. I finished three series and there is one that after reading a second book, I'm not planning on continuing, which I did mention would count, but I would like to not have to count this. In my monthly TBR in August, I mentioned some of the book. This one, I forgot to include it, but some of the series that will be included oh, for this challenge, I wrote all of them on a paper, put them in my little cat jar that I will show you in a second. And uh, these are just some of the series that I really want to continue and or finish. And these will all be options for this month. So I will probably pick like two every week, read them, update you on how I'm doing and if I'm planning on continuing them or not. So these are the options. All of these are, like I mentioned, in the cat jar. Um, <laughs> I'll update you on what's going on with each series whenever I get there. But we need to start. Um, oh, I need to feed the squirrel. Steve is at the window. Should I just do that? Let me give her a peanut and then we can pick a book. This is her begging for peanuts, and she knows. She saw me get up, so. Peanuts, opening a door, and there she is, asking for peanuts. <laughs> there you go. Okay, so now that the squirrel has been fed, <laughs> let's go back to business. Let's see, let's see what I'm reading first. I have no idea, I'm a little nervous. It doesn't look like a lot, but like, all of these are in there. They're all so chunky. I'm very nervous. So the first one we shall be reading. I don't think you can tell. Um, okay, okay, where's that one? Um, this is literally the smallest book in this pile. So I'm glad we're starting fairly easy. This is uh, The Slow Regard of Selling Things by Patrick Rothfuss. This is the 2.5 book in this series. Let me grab the two books so we can talk about them quickly. So quick reminder, I read uh, The Name of the Wind, I think two years ago. I went into it with low expectations because when a book is super hype, I feel like it really depends, can be super hit and miss for me. But adult fantasy, love magical school, so I did enjoy this. I saw it as like the narrator being like unreliable a little bit. So overall enjoyed it, except for like the ending, the weird tangent and the romance, but Overall, it was great, four stars, liked the writing. And then I read book two, nervous because I had been warned about something, not knowing what it was. And yeah, yeah, this was a shit show. This was a two star read for me. I felt like the overall story was really, really disjointed. I felt like the author felt the pressure to try to get to book three and it shows. Uh, and then you get 10 chapters that are straight up. I, I wish I could erase them from my brain and then it affected the rest of the story. So wasn't a fan of book two, but book two and a half, are you following? Ori, Ori, um, she's kind of a strange girl that lives under the school. I'm just curious to read more about her. It's a fairly short book. I completely forgot I had to read this. I had to, to finish the series. It's like 150 pages. Ooh, there's pictures in there too. So I'm gonna read this. I don't think I'm gonna need to update you throughout and then we'll pick something else. But hopefully that goes well. I don't think I'm gonna hate this because like I said, his writing is good and this character is interesting. So I will see you probably in a couple of hours. <laughs> So I'm slowly progressing throughout the book. I won't show you the pictures. I'll try to show you some uh, when I review it. But I really enjoy his writing style. I feel like it's very heavy on the prose compared to a lot of other fantasy, adult fantasy that I've read. But I think that it specifically really suits this character. Okay, so we're a couple hours later. I finished the book. I knew I would be able to read it fairly quickly. Uh, they're atmospheric. It's been raining, thunderstorm literally all day, all night. So it was perfect for mood, to set the mood for this book. It was okay, honestly, she's not my favorite character, but I don't understand how she survives, honestly, even after reading her life for a couple of days. Um, it sounds really awful to me <laughs> to live under the school like that, but I enjoy that she is one of the only people that can name things really easily. It's probably because of the life that she lives in. I don't wanna call her weird, but like, she's very unique, right? So the book was okay, honestly. I don't feel like I'm in love with it or anything, but I really liked let me try to find some cute ones. Uh, there's a lot of illustrations throughout the book, like even just like this, which I thought was a nice touch. Um, I'm not sure how her story is really going to link back into book three, but I don't think this is an unpopular opinion if I mentioned that I don't think book three is ever going to happen. Um, <laughs> Seriously though, right? Uh, so yeah, one done. I not only finished a book, I caught up to series slash finished it because book three is not out now. So I'm now at four 
and a half, <laughs> I guess five uh, series that I have caught up to or I'm not planning on finishing or finished. So only five to go. Is it really possible in one month, like two more weeks, two and a half more weeks? Probably not, but let's try anyway. So we have the Parable of the Talents. Okay. Okay. I'm, I'm totally okay with that. Let's grab it. So I put them in a pile. This is my challenge or what I'm reading <laughs> shelf. It is super messy. Frankly, my whole bookshelf setting is a mess right now because I'm slowly going to be moving them upstairs for the library. So I haven't been organizing them. So these are all the ones that we're doing for this challenge. And this is the parable of the talents. So let's grab it. Ooh, don't fall. <laughs> I actually just read a uh, book one last month and really, really enjoyed this. This is like a apocalyptic kind of book. Uh, but it's very realistic no fantasy element no sci-fi elements there's no like big disease or like nuclear war none of that is just like a slow crumble of society which makes it way more terrifying book one started in 2024 so like even more uh and i've heard that book two is even more intense so i'm really excited one thing is that in book one the main character basically starts her own religion which I'm curious how that's gonna go. Uh, one thing to know is that this was actually meant to be a trilogy, but the author uh, was suffering from uh, writer's block and she was depressed and she just never finished it. She ended up writing, I think it's Fledging, the, the one with the vampires, instead of continuing because she couldn't figure out how to end this book. So I'm very, very curious to see how that's gonna go. I'm a little nervous, but we're reading this with the book club, so we have to do this. And then today, and then the update, uh, rainy update once again, I have read 75 pages-ish of the second book. I don't think I even gave a rating for a book, the first book I finish. It's right there. Uh, I think I'm going to go with like a three. Three stars. 3.5. Like there's nothing wrong with it. It's just not the kind of story I was really enjoying. 3.5. Let's go. Uh, this one. Uh, so far, absolutely horrifying. I've already put quite a few post-its. I will put a close-up to some of the stuff that's in there because... This book, I don't know if I mentioned it, but The Slow Crumble of Society. Yes, I've mentioned that. And this book was published in 1998, and it feels too close to, like, the predictions are way too close from that whole slow, slow crumbling. Uh, the pox, by the way, is just, like, the, the year that the crumbling is happening. There's no disease called the pox. It's just how they call it. Um, and you can see how accurate it is. And there's also another page, another quote to mention, um, there's this man called Jarrett that is trying to become president of the U.S. And he is mentioning how he wants to go back to simpler times and to make America great again. Um, and like bring back religion, blah, blah. So how how did she write this in 1998? It is horrifying. Um, but yes, the second book you're following, she's kind of doing it again because I read another trilogy by her. And the second book was like, kind of companion novel following the same story and it's the same thing here where you're following uh through the eyes of someone else but you know that no has known uh the other characters from book one or is still around these people and we're just seeing the progression of the religion the whole earth seed which is like the name of the series and so far so good it's just still very very horrifying because of how realistic the whole thing is um if you want to not sleep well at night, <laughs> like I keep putting post it and being like, what the heck? How? So yes, um, I will see you a couple more days. I just needed to mention it because, oh my gosh, new day, new update. I wanted to tell you about my progress. You can see a lot more post its I'm at page 150, chapter nine. And this is so good. Better than book one. Book one was good, but this is amazing. I have a few things I want to talk about. Uh, some of them are spoilers so i'm gonna keep that for later but before i start anybody else is being bombarded by fall con content <laughs> on any and every social media because it has been non-stop for me which don't get me wrong i love fall i love it i want all the cute mugs all the cute sweaters and like all the list of movies to watch that are halloweeny but like a few days ago it was 40 degrees celsius here and like even right now the drapes are all closed because it's about 27 degrees celsius it's hot. Way too hot. I do want to drink that hot chai, but like <laughs> right now it's too early. We're still in August. Um, I'm sure there are stores with like Christmas <laughs> decorations already. Anyway, um, first update. Uh, we're going to go back to talking about Jared because that man running for president is 
a little too close to current times. Um, I can't believe she wrote this in 98. I will never get over it. So that man is doing like speeches, obviously, as they do. And um, the main character is talking about, like, he's basically pretending he's against the witch burning, which literally they're burning women and just killing people that are just not like them. Uh, and the main character writes, how much of this nonsense does he believe, I wonder? And how much does he say just because he knows the value of dividing in order to conquer and to rule? Cool, cool, cool. And, oh, and, okay. Um, Christian American types will be happy to silence all women. Jarrett preached that women was to be treasured, honored, and protected, but that for her own sake, she must be silent and obey the will of her husband, father, brother, or adult son, since they understood the world as she did not. So infantilizing women in order to silence them. Cool, cool, cool. And how did they do that? It's not a spoiler. Uh, they literally cut off their tongue because they're, they're nagging. Cool. Which brings me to a comment I've been getting. Um, it goes in wave, really, but I got one recently and I just... I need to address it because it's bugging me clearly. Um, people telling me to keep politics out of my videos, that they watch me for book reviews. And I'm like horrified and kind of fascinated uh, because books are political. <laughs> this book is extremely political. This was written by a black woman, a feminist in the 90s. How is this not political? Literally, my existence on the internet is political. I'm a woman. I have opinion that I'm sharing. I'm making money out of this. And the best part is the fact that them telling me to be silent is political. <laughs> like, how, how cognitive dissonance, right? Fascinating, like I said. So yeah, um, I'm going to go back to my incredibly bleak, way too realistic book. And I'm going to go back to also dreaming about pumpkin chai, pumpkin spice, chai too. So <laughs> I will see you in a few days when I'm further because I'm not even halfway through and i depressed. <laughs> this is so good though. Hi, so I need a sanity check because I'm second guessing myself and I hate that I'm second guessing myself because I shouldn't have to. Um, earlier today, I got my grocery delivered. And this man was giving me the boxes. I was just putting them inside my house. And as I was doing that, he asked me if he could give me a compliment. And like, I didn't even realize what he said. I just automatically said, yeah, sure, what's up? And he started saying that I had pretty eyes or whatever, which like, I understand that like, he didn't mean anything by it. But like, I got so uncomfortable that I just, you know, said automatically, thank you because politeness, right? And I just closed the door and locked it ASAP. And like, I want to complain about it because they always sent you an email after, right? Did everything go okay? Blah, blah, blah. And I want to mention it because it's not okay for that man to do that. He should know better. Like he was in his mid forties. Like he was older than me. And like, of course I'm going to be uncomfortable. I know that he didn't mean anything by it probably, but like he knows where I live. And it made me super uncomfortable. But can I even complain? Because... He knows where I live. And now I would be scared if I did say something because he would know it's me. I hate that I have to consider the fact that what if he gets in trouble? What if he loses his job and like remembers where I live and come and gets his revenge? Like, why do you have to consider that? I hate this. And I hate that I have to second guess myself because like I want to say something because he could make someone else really uncomfortable but i also have to think about what's going to happen to me if this man is not stable you know and i really hate this because like again he's old enough to know better and i feel like this year even though like i broke my toe this summer so i didn't spend as much time walking and everything as usual but i swear this has been the worst summer in years with the cat calling. Like it has been nonstop. I cannot go to the park without being talked to. And I just, I don't know what's been going on with the pandemic. People are desperate to talk to people, but like, I don't want to be approached by strange men. I just don't. And like, I really hate that I now have to be self-conscious about 
men knocking at my door too. Like I just want to get a ring light at this point because I just don't feel safe. Not just because of the gross two men. Like <laughs> I feel like I sound like I'm overthinking this, but I feel like at the same time, a lot of women would understand. It's just like I live alone. So of course I'm not comfortable with any kind of strange, strange men noticing me in any way. So yeah, I don't know if I should complain or not. Good morning. I wanted to update you on the book. I finished this. Can you see how many post-its I put in there? That's probably the most I've ever done. Honestly, I'm going to need a few days to really talk about this book because right after my last update, I read the 100 pages in the middle that are straight up traumatic. <laughs> don't get me wrong, this book is an easy five stars. I absolutely adored it. I feel like it's going to stay with me forever. Um, and I don't feel like the author was needlessly like graphic or anything. It's not her style at all, but... I don't think I will ever want to reread this. <laughs> I just feel like this feels too realistic. Like, how did she know that a lot of these things would happen? And I feel like it's a common theme in all of her work that humanity kind of sucks. But deep down, deep, deep down, uh, there's a message of like hope in here. Like, it's... It was really, really good. And like, I, I really loved it. Um, this was meant to be a trilogy, but unfortunately the author suffered from writer's block and she ended up writing a different book and then she unfortunately passed away before she had the time to attempt uh, more seriously the third book. There were apparently a few pages found here and there, but it is something that is okay not to have a third book for. Like, it's the second series that I read by her. I had read another one and um, similarly, books were... You could kind of stop after one or two if you wanted to. Obviously, I still wish the third book existed because I wouldn't know how it would have continued because it was meant to be in space. Um, but this was fantastic. I liked book one, but book two is just absolutely amazing. You're going to hear me rave about this book nonstop. Like, I will annoy you soon enough um, with it or any of her books, really, because, damn, this was so good. Uh, I'll talk about it more in my wrap-up, I just feel like I need a couple days because I binge read the rest and I'm like in shock right now. <laughs> like no thoughts. Uh, but let's figure out what are we going to read next week? What am I going to read next week? Oh gosh. Can you see this? <laughs> Golden Sun. Okay. Golden Sun. It looks like next week, maybe, you know what? I'm just going to put the two books that I want to give a second chance to the author together. So that's what I'm going to be reading next week. The Blinding Knife by Brent Weeks and Golden Sun by Pierce Brown. So I'll see you then. Oh.